I am frustrated. You see, when you try to build cool things, you're bound to get stuck in itty pity little things. For example, now I've been working on this sign up page for like two days. And everything's working perfectly except for this tiny, tiny detail. So I thought I'd take a break to explain what it actually is that I'm building. Let's get to it. I know we're acting stupid. years we've seen all kind of products be digitalized everything from audiobooks audible storytell bookbeat it's all in an app songs spotify apple music uh, tidal pandora it's all in an app movies netflix hbo max disney plus it's all in an app the ways in which we consume content is becoming all more digital but there's one part which has been left behind. Because you know what? They don't have any representatives in the so-called tech world. It's so natural for us to just walk on our phone, throw on Spotify, and we have a library of millions of songs that are just a thumb tap away. Or we want to listen to an audiobook. We just head over to Audible, press play on our favorite book, and we're ready to learn about the world of engineering. Or the world, I don't know why engineering. Or we're able to learn about the world of paper towels and how they impact the Amazon or whatever in an audiobook on our way to work. It's pretty cool when you think about it. But there's one part which has been left behind. One part in the crucial way which we're formed as human beings from a very young age and how we consume content. You see, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, what I liked to listen to before I went to bed was stories. Bedtime stories. I still remember one specific story which my dad would uh, make up almost every night. It was about a specific guy who lived in a castle. He used to make diamonds by pressing coal in his basement. And he had different castles all over the countryside. And he had tunnels underneath he'd be running. People would be trying to steal his diamonds. A new iteration of the same great story every evening. But we live in a busy world. Parents don't always have time to make up stories but kids still want to consume them. And it's probably essential. You need to hear these things as a kid in order to develop, grow, use your imagination and develop your brain function and just develop as a kid. However, if you want to hear a story as a kid these days, it's either going to be made up by a parent, read from a storybook, or you can just watch TV. But parents don't always want their kids to watch TV. For example, what if you're putting your kid to bed and you just want to read them a story, but this specific night you don't have the time to read them a story. You see what I'm getting at? There's no product for this. There's no service for this. And there's no way, and there's no way anyone's helping kids to make their childhood magic by providing these kinds of stories. And this is where this app comes in, Wonder Saga. So I'm sure you've seen this name so far, but this is what it's based on. We have outsourced so many parts of parenting to YouTube, Netflix, iPad apps, Candy Crush, we have three-year-olds who know how to play Angry Bird. That's the level we're at. But I don't think this is all negative. I think, you know, there's probably a very good part of it where you as a parent can save time and your kid can get just as much enjoyment out. And this is one of those examples. And the way I want to address this is by creating a platform or a service or an app, whatever you want to call it, that features kids' stories. And of course, you're going to say, yeah, there's already kids' audiobooks, etc. Yes, but that's the thing. They're audiobooks. This is a brand new market, they're called audio stories. Because I don't know how about you, but still, I don't really have this patience even when I'm 22. Probably when you're 2 or you're 3 or 4 or 5, you don't have the patience to listen to a 10 hour audiobook. No! You want that instant gratification. You want to listen to a story which is interesting, captivating, colorful, makes your imagination work. And it's probably going to be what, 10 to 20 minutes maybe, tops because you don't have the attention span to listen to anything else. And now, with our homes being filled with smart speakers, Google Homes... Hey Google, what time is it? It's 10.02 p.m. They're all around us, and it's gonna be the future. So, what prevents you from saying, okay, hey Google, play this story on Wonder Sagas? That's what we're gonna make available. 
we're gonna make parents be able to say to their smart speaker, their smart system, okay, play this story now, please. And then the kid's room is gonna be filled with a wonderful tale that just captivates their attention, makes their imagination work. So how I'm planning to do it is I'm planning to build a platform. And that's all the coding you've seen so far. And the platform is gonna be like an app, possibly a website in the future, but to begin with, it's gonna be an app, probably for iPhone to start with, and then possibly Android in the future. Or it's gonna have to be Android for the future. You can't just have one platform, that's not a serious app. But you gotta start somewhere. So we're probably gonna start with iOS, iPhone, and then that's gonna be the platform. Then there's all this content that I've been, you've been hearing me say this so much, content, 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 content all over the place. But the content that we're gonna be acquiring is these kids' stories. And they're gonna be between 10 and 20 minutes long, and they're gonna be captivating, colorful, and they're gonna make the imagination work. That's the plan. So I'm gonna have this platform, which in this case is the app, and then I'm gonna have a database connected to that platform. And in this database, we're gonna be able to add stories that which we acquire. So say for example, we get a new story, 20 minutes long, about a guy who makes diamonds in his basement in the castle with various different tunnels connecting the different castles. We're gonna be able to put that up on the database and it's gonna be streamable from the app. And of course, like any of these, you gotta make money somehow, I gotta eat, you know? There's gonna be a subscription fee. And we're gonna try to make it quite cheap. I mean, the, the goal here isn't to make, make incredible amounts of money, obviously. Relatively affordable, maybe $5 a month, $10 a month, something like that. And, and then when you have that access, you're gonna be able to stream all of these stories. Just like you would with an audiobook, for example, or with Spotify, or with Apple Music. You get access to this library of just wonderful content, which you can access at any time, any place, whenever you want. And you can stream it in your kid's bedroom, you can play it on a road trip, you can play wherever kids listen to stories. So that's the product in a very brief way. I'm not sure how much in detail I want to go, because I'm still a bit worried someone's going to copy this, because I feel like this is such a good idea, and I can't believe no one's done this yet. Maybe that's a bad sign that no one's done this, because, you know, maybe it just doesn't work. Maybe countless of people have tried and it just hasn't worked out but hey at least we tried then right so right now i think what's going to be the the two most uh, time consuming stages is one building the app uh, we're making quite good progress actually in terms of building the app but i feel like we're going to encounter some patrol when we get to making the actual sound playing part and the payments part but right now the timeline is doing two months this is a very ambitious timeline and trust me i'm working like 80 hours a week i have a full-time job and the rest of the time i'm just spending on this and some other projects but i'm working a lot on this so in the plan is in two months have a first version or a first prototype of this app where we can have some basic stories we can have all the functionality uh, except for the payments which we'll add later on and see if there's a smoother way to, to handle the payments. And also, I don't want to be dealing with that stuff right now when I'm still kind of learning because, you know, it's people's money, it's a bit scary. I don't know what happens if I just charge everyone a thousand dollars accidentally. I don't want to be liable. If that happens, I'll just probably just flee to Panama and sell everything that I have and probably just retire on the beach and drink my ties. We'll see. But do you see what I'm saying here? There's an untapped potential and there's a possibility to make kids' lives better. Because when parents are so busy, I feel like it would be such a good thing to do uh, to provide kids with these stories that I feel like they're missing. Because of course you can watch YouTube, you can watch Netflix, you can watch kids' TV, but in my mind, that's not the same and it doesn't trigger your imagination as a kid in the same way as listening to a story does. And that's why we need to bring stories back to kids and we need to find a way to provide a service while doing it so that we can charge for it, essentially. Because that's what makes the world go around, right? So to summarize, the plan is, or the product is, one place, one platform, where you can access, to, to begin with, tens of, but hopefully in the future, hundreds of kids' stories that are between 10 and 30 minutes long. Maybe we'll even feature some classic longer books. For example, I know some of the uh, real kids' classics don't have a copyright anymore. So for example, Alice in the Wonderland and Huckleberry Finn you just have free right to those because it's been so long since they were produced so the uh, copyright for them has actually expired so you can use them. So maybe we'll keep some of those le real classic pieces of uh, content in there or I don't, I'm not sure if you call them pieces of content but some of those classic literary works or well, maybe we'll put them in there. But the primary part or the primary aim of this app is going to be to have kids stories which you can tap in as easily as you would to a Spotify song 
or that you can listen to as easily as you would an audible audiobook, for example. And the target market for this, obviously the target market is going to be parents, because you know, I don't know how many five-year-olds five have credit cards in order to spend and sign up for subscriptions. So the target market obviously is going to be parents, probably middle class, upper class, busy parents, you know, working a lot, uh, they're looking to outsource part of their parenting to kids, but they want to do it in a better way than just making them watch YouTube or, or just making them play Angry Birds. They want the kids to have these magical childhood stories which make up, make up their imagination and part of which makes it so good being a kid. You live in your half imaginary world, there's no worries whatsoever, you're just listening to your kids stories, letting your imagination run wild and just living life. If we can help bring that to kids and if we can help make that a actual tech product at the same time, I think that would be a fantastic thing. But also I think it's a fun uh, fun project to do. But obviously this is just the first part of the product and after this there's going to be so much more potential because if we make distinct kid stories, like for example we say we have a specific turtle named Mike and he's the main character in 10 of our kid stories. There's going to be so much more potential for selling merchandise like stuffed animals, games, collective items for this turtle Mike. Because if you own the, all the rights in perpetuity to these particular stories, then there's so much you can do with them in the future. So the plan is essentially to make it a multiple stage rocket. One, build a platform. Two, stream the stories through the platform. Maybe you can even make the stories free if you have another product which you sell in relation to these stories. The initial idea is to make it a subscription. So you subscribe, you get access to all these kids stories, you can listen to them, you can stream them, you can maybe download them. I will see how, how we want to do with that because quite frankly most people have constant access to the internet these days. So maybe there's not even a need to make it downloadable. Because I know there's a bit of extra stuff going into it but since it's a subscription if you make it downloadable because yeah you need to do offline checks and all that kind of stuff. You gotta start with the audio content. One, that's the easiest to make. Two, I think in my opinion, I think that's what's gonna be the most value to society as a whole. And trust me, I'm no saint myself, you know? But what I'm saying is that I think, I'm not saying it's unethical, but I'm saying that I can see there's an argument that this product might be slightly unethical, because in one aspect, you're just helping parents remove themselves from the raising of a kid. For example, when I was a kid and I wanted to hear a story, my parents would have to read that to me and they'd have to interact with. Even when I grew up, iPads weren't really around, you know, so parents read stories to their kids. That might seem like a strange thing today if you have a kid or if you're of the younger generation. Obviously, I'm no old hound myself, but quite a lot happens in 22 years, you know? But I, I, I can definitely see why someone may argue that a product like this may be slightly unethical or at least maybe not necessarily positive. But my take on it is that one, I'm not here to tell parents how to raise their kids. Two, I think the fact that it's audio content in a world that's so dominated by video content makes it relatively more positive because you have to use your imagination in a way which you can't really do if you're watching YouTube or if you're watching a kid's show on TV, for example. When you're a kid and you listen to a story, you have to picture all of the characters by yourself. You have to draw that storyline in your head, you have to draw it up, picture the characters, and just work out the context around it. And I think that's probably essential for a kid in order to develop. Now we're getting deeper, but I think a sign of a well-socialized kid is when you can take something like that, an arbitrary idea, and then you can make something out of it because you have a conceptual framework of what society looks like already. So you can apply that to something like a story. And I think that exercise is very beneficial for development, probably at a young age. And that's why I think that, okay, I, I see why people may say that this is unethical because you take time away from parents with their kids because now why would they read a story to their kid and interact with them when they can just head over to Wonder Sagas and throw on a really good story. But also, one alternative may be that we may include text versions of all of the stories in the app. So then as a parent, you can, instead of having to make up your own story, you can just go on there and you can read the story off of the app. Or you can play it on audio if you want to. So I think that's a relatively brief... I don't know if that's brief. I don't know how long I've been sitting here ranting. I'm pretty good at this. I just sit down and I rant. I do this at meetings in my, in my job too. Sometimes people like it, sometimes they don't. I, I don't really care. But yeah, I think that's the summary of the product. I think that captures the overall idea of it at least. A subscription service where you can subscribe in order to get access to a big library of kids stories. I think that provides some more context for the rest of the episode. So now I think that's it for this episode and I'll see you in the next one.
Society in general, but also for my pockets. <laughs> no, I don't mean to say that.